Hello, hello, and welcome, my beautiful, lovely final third followers and fans. It's a beautiful evening. We've had a lovely game week for just memorable football, historical football. Action packed with games. The same way I woke up, I haven't bathed. I've just been in my parlor, just like this. Just been enjoying, <laughs> enjoying food. Just stewing in your own mess. Just stewing. I've had about three coppers, some popcorn, rice, and stew. You know how we do. Started off with. Arsenal, Sheffield, got our three points. But I want to come to you, Banks, with the historical beatdown that Tottenham gave you at OT. The dance floor they've turned it to. Like, can we just, can we just touch on the game firstly? Look, forget the lineup, forget everything. Don't talk about transfers. Gary Neville's told us a lot about that on Sky. Ever's given us enough of a reaction. But what happened, bro? What happened? Who doesn't take blame from that match? Like you wanna you wanna put on one person and then you see the next person, like you don't get away with it either. Like you look at Solskjaer and you say, You're so crap that I have to put the blame on you. And then I look at our midfield and I'm seeing Pogba doing nonsense. I'm seeing Marshall, even though he got baited in. First of all, how does Marshall get sent off and then Lamella gets nothing? That's a whole different thing. I'm seeing Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire. Chuckle Brothers reincarnated is very frustrating to watch something happen and you've got no power to stop it from London. I'm in London, England right now and I've got no <laughs> power to stop Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw being an ass at Old Trafford. I've got nothing, no power to stop that. So when I see Harry Maguire dragging back Luke Shaw from, from making a tackle, I can't do nothing about that. I can only expect it to happen and when it happens, I can't be mad. When I see Luke Shaw drop into centre-back, then, auto, um, then for some reason become a centre-mid, leaving Harry um, Hung Min Son and Eric Lamella to run in and score an easy goal. I can't be surprised because I expect that from him. I expect that sort of stupidity. When I see that happen, I cannot be surprised. So it's hard to be surprised. It's hard to be disappointed as a, as a United fan watching that because I'm so numb to these idiots. You look at them, and I'm so numb to these numb skulls that like, I don't get. I don't get how you can be so stupid, but I'm not surprised by it. That like, the the fact that they behave in such a way it doesn't surprise me no more. Like Pogba, I love you, my brother, but at this rate, you're not worth giving another contract. If you're gonna play like this, I'm, I, I hope you come out of whatever slump because you know the player that you are. But at this rate, it's not even worth you giving another contract. That he is? The hassle. I, we know the player that he is or that he could be, but right now, even for the last couple of months, even before look, um before the season ended, he didn't look like the sort of player that you need is desperate. We need to give this guy a contract. He didn't look like that. Mm. And you look and you look at Rashford, he tried, Greenwood he tried, but again, he tried and he did. tried and he tried. <laughs> Fam, I like it's United, so I don't even want to get annoyed about it because I expect it, but you look at it and then that Oli Gunnar Solskjaer sitting there and you don't expect nothing from him because he doesn't know how to change this game. He doesn't know how to affect the flow of this game. He doesn't. And we let the worst thing, the worst thing, you let my up, number one up, come and dance at my home, come and dance in my living room, come and dance in my pala. You can't let Jose Mourinho come back and do this in my own home where I lay my feet, where I sing my heart out for you people. You can't let him come and do that because now Jose Mourinho is going to have the snarky. Oh, it's never nice when you see a coach go through this. You know, it's never nice. But yeah, I Jose told him. Mourinho I told, is going to come with the most humble, humble. You don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. But you got, we got nothing. That we can't stop that because. Oh, Look, it's I don't one. even want to get. I don't even want to get onto the board right now because no. whoever's running the club as the, the people running the club as well, fucking clowns as well. Like, you can't run away. It's not about getting central. It's about having a plan. It's about doing things early. Everybody said, we get the Champions League. We sign players. We move on to the next stage of our development. And here we are on the last day, getting whacked up by um, Spurs 6-1, trying to drag in Cavani and Alex Tells to try and cover up. This doesn't cover up anything. It doesn't cover up anything. Because it's clear. And at the end of the day, when... 
even though Tells and Cavani, they, they're nice, they're all right, it shows what, what the board expect from us. And when, when, you, when you align your expectations with what the board want from us, you'll understand that this club is going nowhere fast. That's what, you, that's, what I, that's what I have to understand, like, and a lot of United fans have to understand is this board does not intend on us getting back to the top. It doesn't intend on us getting back to the top. If it did, they'd sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer right now. Like, right now, he'd be gone. He'd be out of the door and we'd be looking for a new manager over the international break. But this club doesn't know how to, how to act like a big club anymore. It doesn't. It doesn't. So we're going to linger and we're going to, and we're going to give him more players and we're going to, the season's still early. We could still get Champions League. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. Uh-huh. But where do we go after that? Where do we go after that? Because there's a long season. Because nah, I don't know what's I mean, going to happen. Still will, you obviously get Champions League, but I'm saying, well, it's not obvious, but you, it's not like you're out of the Champions League race. That's what I'm trying to say. But, but are you basically saying, that? what do you go after that? Yeah, I understand. What, okay. What do we do after what that? What does it win mean for Tottenham? What does it mean for Tottenham? It's a good win for Tottenham because they've had, what, four games in eight days. Their players look and their players still look sharp, like Pung Min Son sharp off the mark. You got you got put in for that um for that second goal. You look great for that. Harry Kane sharp as well. Got his two goals. So it's it, it, it's good for Tottenham. You still have to add um Gareth Bale into that. Still have to um add a couple it's more. Pieces. I'm sure they're gonna make a. It's very good for Tottenham because you guys are very good. You guys are favourites for top four, and that's what they did to you. So it's very sure it's just it, it's a good measuring stick for them just at the, as they are right now. With Tottenham, it's more so hopefully the good times of Mourinho can last a spell of a season rather than it crumble halfway through the season. Because I'm seeing Spurs fans say, Oh, we told them Mourinho it would crumble, but they've all improved. But yeah, that's the thing with Mourinho. It's, 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 when it's, it's, still good, early. it's good, it's still early. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. But credit for today, you played well and United did let you play well as well. You're seeing Lamella Let have them. a masterclass. Let them. You're seeing, and Let them. In the belly. In the belly, pulling down Paul Pogba's pants. Oh, man. Okay. Oh. So, just lastly, going into tomorrow's deadline day for, for you lot specifically, what do you want? Because you keep talking about the board. What do you want? What do I want? I want the board to plan stuff in advance and not be running around on deadline you got day one more day to drag to Cavani from Europe. You've got one more day to do something. What do you want? I would I, Same thing we've needed since the beginning of the transfer window. We needed a left back. We needed a right winger. We need another, we need another centre midfielder. And another so you take one back. thing from tomorrow and what's it going to be? One. One thing. One thing. One thing. One thing. Mauricio Pochettino. Honestly, give me the same. Give me this squad. Give me Pochettino. I don't. I don't even want any more signings. I lied. I lied. Get Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire out. I lied. I'm crying. Still, give me. Give me Pochettino. Give me Pochettino plus one or two other pieces, and I'm happy. I'm happy. If you're one one thing from transfer deadline day, give me Pochettino. Give me Pochettino, and add one or two signings, and I'll be happy, because, like. Where do we go? Where are we going from here? Like, no board member can tell me that this is the plan. Man United don't plan for these things. We don't plan ahead. We have no ambition to get back to the top, to challenge Liverpool and challenge Man City and whatnot. So I'm not surprised by what I see on the pitch. I'm not surprised by how we act on the, in the transfer window, how we act in the transfer market. It doesn't surprise me anymore. Okay, going on to the next game because we've heard, I've, heard, I've heard enough of United fans. I've seen enough of your tweets. Ever's said enough today. What did we witness? Obviously, us being Villa boys. It's, us it's being good, Villa boys. Yeah, I won't say I won't say born and raised. I would say I would say taught and graduated Villa boys. Did you get like every, any, <laughs> any 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 Villa victory that doesn't involve? That doesn't involve our team's shortcomings. We're here for it. But that, that was, good. That was up, good to watch. We grew up on Villa. You grew up on Villa. Good to watch. It's the only thing that lifted my mood slightly. Like I didn't think I didn't think I could get a smile out of the rest of Brightened my your son. It brightened my Sunday. <laughs> Woo! Woo! And the hey, sad part is, hey. it should have been eight. It should have been eight or nine. It, it could have been nine or ten. It could have been nine or ten. If Ross Barkley puts a couple away, Watkins had a great chance. And Watkins Grealish. was moving like... No one drug but has a game and he's like, yeah. okay, I'm yeah. bully that defender for 30 minutes. That's what, that's that what he reminded me of. Minutes. 
and I'll come back to bully this defender for the rest of the game. They had to take Gomez off because he didn't know what to do with him. He didn't That's what, hold up that's the what, that's what he, he looked like Drogba, like prime Drogba. <laughs> like a, prime. a Drogba that's bully Drogba. Bully Drogba. Watkins was dragging it out of the air, holding, holding, holding Gomez down. at the same time. Holding him at the same time, the saying, trend, wait there, legs. wait there, let me get the ball under control. I'm going to spray it out to Trezeguet. And then you can go over to, he go over and say, look here, big man. I ain't trying to dribble past you, but I'm going to still get the ball, hold it up, and I'm going to spray it to Grealish. It doesn't matter. Like, they couldn't do nothing to stop him. They couldn't do nothing to throw him out of his rhythm. And he got a perfect hat-trick out of that. A perfect hat-trick. I'm seeing him dunk all over, get a header. I'm seeing him, oh, man, that second finish. Second finish. Literally. Oh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing John McGinn, John McGinn driven. Bo- it's it was beautiful to watch. It's this. I'm seeing Van McGinn was doing all these little turns in the centre circle, getting away, spray it out to the wing. Hey, we I'm um, freaking Barkley and Grealish doing their thing. I'm like, ooh. And hey. then, then I'm gonna bring up three players that Liverpool are growing out of patience, running out of patience with. First one, Naby. I see you got that one all over, and it's changed nothing. <laughs> Naby. It's oh, it forget, feels so Kobe. Let's not let's not forget Nabi's fifty mil. Let's not forget Nabi. It took him. Like, we were hearing it will take him a season to find his feet. Nabi, you've been here a while now, and we don't. I don't know what you I don't know what you do. You're just energy. As as <laughs> and as Liverpool Liverpool midfielders very easily get put into a box that is just energy, and it seems like that's all you are. But when Liverpool fans are going to need more from you this season, if this it seems that like the way this twenty twenty is going. It doesn't seem like we're going to get a whole run of the mill like the proper rundown Liverpool gave us last season where they go on a bag of wins and they literally just run with it. I think this is going to be... This is where everyone just part beating each other up. Remember that? Remember that jagging <laughs> top four race? Remember the top four race? Like, two yeah. Three, that was, everyone was just losing. Everyone's like, if you drew three games in a row, you'd get top four because everyone was losing every week, basically. That's how it's looking like. That's how the prem, the top of the prem is going to be because... Man City don't look strong. Liverpool, who did look strong, you don't look strong and get beaten seven two by Villa. If this cool. was the if this cool. was the hangover match, if this was the hangover match that they had at the back end of last season, I'd understand. But I don't know where this this result comes from. I don't know where it comes from. There's no excuse. It comes from complacency with them, man. There's no excuse. They feel, like it, they feel like it's coming too. They feel like it's coming too easy for them. They can just step out onto a pitch and do it. And now but teams, are, teams are stepping up to them. Second player, second player they're running out of patience with, Genie. Genie's one of my favourites. Genie's one of my favourites. But Liverpool fans, I start time and time again. And a lot of us will not see it because we're not Liverpool fans and we don't watch Liverpool games week in, week out. But Genie hides from the ball. Genie, when off, off the ball, off the ball, positioning, plays his role, very good defensively, covers blocks, fills holes. When it comes to being on the ball, not even when it comes to Liverpool in possession, Genie doesn't show for the ball. Doesn't show for the ball enough. Like when Fabinho's on the ball, he's never an option. In fact, he could be start as an option, but it seems like he moves so he's not passed to. He's never an option on the ball. And what frustrates Liverpool fans, especially the ones I've been speaking to, they're going to say what is very annoying about Genie is because next week he's going to go to Netherlands, he's going to score and do the <laughs> celebration. <laughs> he's gonna do the muscle man celebrate. He's gonna do it, and he's gonna and he's gonna be like, "But are you the same player?" But I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna have to put the lights on Genie now. A TF3 special. We're gonna have to put Genie under the radar. A whole last, special. Last but not special. Least, last but not least, I think the Firmino agenda is settled now. It's confirmed. Liverpool fans have come around. They've stopped defending us. They've stopped saying. <laughs> They've stopped saying what he is on F. You know, on F. M. When we're just they've stopped. They've stopped. Oh, saying, there's like is that two and a half star now? Two they've and stopped. And a half star. They've the potential used to be four star. Two and a half star. Two and a half star. Now. Centre back, centre forward. They've stopped saying everything. <laughs> they've they've stopped. And we we can all admit Firmino is not good enough. That was the level up they needed as well. The Werner not let. And I understand CJ's not here to say the transfer he was very upset about not getting was Werner. They should have got that, but. Firmino, we're going to need more. Now we're going to need more. Because no. even Liverpool fans have stopped defending the fact that your job is not to score. It because it sounds... you get chances. You get chances to score. Like, that's it's been the case since last season. Like, you've been had your chances to score. You just don't put them in the back of the net. 7-2, though. No one could beat wait, wait. One, one player I think they're also getting tired of low-key is Joe Gomez. Because like, he would have 
in and out, janky ass game. In and out, janky ass game. They've got patience for Joe. You They've got, got patience got with Joe Gomez who they get another DM. Because if they get another DM, then Fabinho could stop into centre back more often. But they've got patience for Joe Gomez. We'll They've see. Got... We'll see. Van Dijk can still carry him. He's got a couple. Van Dijk's got a big like. He's got the strength. He can still carry him for a couple more years. They've got patience for Joe Gomez. I don't mind the odd blip, but they've got patience for him. Um, let's just touch on City before we round off. Bielsa versus Pep. Yeah, man. Bielsa had to put him over. Bielsa, what do, what's, that, what's that thing they say? We had, they had us in the first half. They had us in the first half. <laughs> they had us in the first half, but uh, <laughs> no. Um, I, 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 I such no, a thrilling, no. such a thrilling one-one, such an end-to-end one-one, like just expansive. It just seems like we remember when Liverpool had the whole "we'll score more than you" kind of vibe. Just no defense, all out attack. Mm. This was like the 2015, the Gerard Slip season when they could score. They were the best. Sorry, Suarez season when they're 2014. Thank you. When they could score more than everyone, but no defense. That's what it seems like City want to do this season. But even at that, it's not if City aren't even creating a lot, enough chances to be there. So they don't look great. What, I can't do lie, wanna, they don't look great. What do you want to be? Great. Do you want to be an all-out attack, like score more than you? Or do you want to be resolute? Or do you want to play tiki taka? Because you're not moving the ball as fast anymore. Um, you don't have an out-and-out striker anymore. Aguero's not... Aguero's already shown us throughout the season he can't give you the longevity of a whole season. Now he's getting even more injured and he's missing more games. And Jesus filling that role on his own is long. Wit- it's, 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 it's a lot. No team has one striker. It's a lot. No, yeah? But, um, but as, for, as, for, as, for, as for the game itself... Facts. It, Facts. Oh, really? you're, you're cutting out, bro. You're freezing, by the way. Shem, you're freezing mad. You're, you're freezing, freezing like crazy, bro. by the way. You're freezing. I can see. I can. I can see. My answer, my, I'm not even. Oh, I'm like a legend. You're free. You free, bro. Can you that now? Yeah, you were, you were freezing, bro. Come over. I can't even see you on the screen no more. I can't see you on the screen no more, bro. Yeah. I can see you. Now. I can see you. Now. Can you, all right, just quickly. You now I was going to say, um, with Leeds, they've shown they can play f- fantastic football. They play good. Yeah, football. They, Calvin, they stood up Calvin to them. Phillips got pressed up. up to them. Calvin Phillips got pressed up early in the game, yeah, and really made the blip. But then he came back strong, and that actually shows a lot of character. Um, considering he has no prem, like very new. These are his first season and debut season. He ain't scared. That's a that's you. That's a proper DM mobile. You ain't scared. Like these are kept on pressing them. He said, "Keep giving me the ball. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna yeah, figure right. it out." And he did and figure he grew, it out. He grew through. He, he grew. grew he grew into the game. Um, Ian Pervader coming on second half as well. Really, he gave them something down that right hand side. Definitely gave them something to trouble Mendy with. He had to get. He ended up having to get taken off because he would have got sent off. He would have definitely got sent off. <laughs> Stop. I don't want to bring Pervader up. Pervader was given. The escape got him Mendy too much at City. And I think it just paid nah, it's, the crap. It's not scapegoating. I don't think it's scapegoating because he's generally just like a bad defender. Like, it's he's okay bad. A lot to, of them are bad defenders. It's cool. um, the, the full-backs definitely have a brain-dead moment between them. Centre-backs were all right today. I'm not really sold on Laporte and Ruben Diaz as a partnership. I'm not really sold yeah. on that. But yeah. yesterday, they weren't the biggest problems. Mendy and Walker them two together, you're going to get mistakes out of them. So, as you said, it's a weird one. Like, do they want to be mad attacking? Do they want... Because right now, they're neither. Like, and that's why I'm saying they're, they're not looking scary this season. Like, it's Wolves... Sterling's just Wolves, always... Been, in their three games, three games, Wolves had their chances. Leicester, again, got beat bad. And this game, Leeds weren't scared of them. Mm. Teams aren't going to be as scared of Guardiola this season. And People have said it before, but this might be the final season of this Guardiola thing at City, I believe, especially if they don't win the Premier League. I believe this season, he wouldn't have been here this season if, um, if we've had, we didn't have the pandemic and things and the season finished with the Champions League mm. run going to plan. But he extended the contract. The boost they really needed was Lionel Messi, if I'm being honest. But I, I don't what know. Sort of, what sort of boost package is that? That's, that's the, the boost they needed was Lionel Messi. Yeah. What club doesn't need a boost 
could Lionel Messi? See, no club, no other club could get Lionel. You, you ain't in, you ain't in that bag. So it's actually embarrassing talking about Pep needs Lionel Messi. Pep needs Lionel Messi to do what? No, to do I what? didn't say Pep. I didn't say do, Pep. You, you said you indirectly said boost, Pep needs Lionel Messi the boost they to needed, do what? The boost the players needed that boost. What Listen. club does not need the boost of Lionel Messi? Let me know that. Does Ars- could Arsenal use the boost Barcelona of Lionel Messi? Barcelona don't need the boost of Lionel Messi right now. Because <laughs> he's a fawn. He's a fawn in the side right now. So you've answered your question. Barcelona is already out. Um, but we shall see with City. We'll see with City. What, City. what Liverpool have shown us is giving us a lifeline for people like you and all you other phonies who've gone back on your word and said Klopp. Clop this, clop that. Liverpool the best. It's going to be Liverpool. So I said, listen, trust in Uncle Pep. He's got one more. Trust him. What, what's he giving you to... You know what? You know what? Tim, trust Tim, you're, you're going to support you're going to support. But trust in Uncle at the end of the day... He's going to give us one more. One more run. One more. you got one, one more in you. Hmm? One so more. you got one more in you. He's got one more in him. And that's it. And that's it for the Prem. It's over after that. Because we would have had the best managers, the best players, and it's over for football. But yeah, one more. But yeah, um, it's been a fantastic week, everyone. A fantastic game week. It's cold. Uh, Manchester United fans, Manchester United fans, protect your mental health tomorrow. Protect it's transfer deadline day tomorrow. Don't expect anything of this club. No expectations, no disappointment. I promise you that. If there's one thing I can promise you, no expectations, no disappointment. We're sending sending backs. We're sending backs that we're sending banks up to Carrington tomorrow, tier three. So stay tuned on the channel. Be up some guys. You can catch Mike feeling. We ain't seen Mike feeling in years. Where, where's he at? Where's he at? When we were winning, man was chatting the most. He was chatting his ass off. Now I can't see it for nothing. He used to be on Twitter as well. He used to be tweeting like a tweeting man. I ain't seen him tweet once. You better come out and tweet something. But I'm going carry. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna find you. If I ain't gonna find him, I'm gonna find him. I'm gonna find. Ever said some people need slap. Up, he's he ain't told one lie. Some people in that club just need slapping up, these slappings. Let me see Ed Woodward. You've been negotiating for three months, you ain't got nothing done. You need a slapping. What happened to Woody? What happened to Woody? What happened to Woody? You said, What happened to Ed Boogie? You used to think it was Ed Boogie. Now you just need a slapping. That's what you need. You just need a slap. You need a cool slapping just to remind you people that you still got jobs to do. You're not supposed to be an embarrassment to the club. And when ever said. You look in the mirror and see you're an embarrassment. He ain't told one lie. Some of you people are just the embarrassment. You've done nothing but bring embarrassment to the club. Maguire, you should be in prison. You should be in prison. We bailed you out. We bailed you out to come and play this season. You're out here disgracing us. You should be in prison. You should be facing charges. Oh, man. Look off this thing, man. I'm going to carry it in tomorrow. Let me, see. Let me see if I don't see Sancho at Carrington tomorrow. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I don't see Sancho at Carrington tomorrow. Cool. Ooh. <laughs>